Hello and welcome to Castles and Legends. Today we are up in North Wales at Beaumaris Castle, the most spectacular castle ever. That was never finished. It was to be the final masterpiece of Edward I's Iron Ring of Castles, following his conquest of Wales. Following many years of tensions between the Normans and Welsh, Edward I unleashed his first colossal invasion of Wales in 1277. Confronted with an overwhelming English army, Llewellyn the Last understood that he had little chance of prevailing against immense English foes and agreed to the conditions outlined in the Treaty of Aberconwy. These terms significantly reduced Llewellyn's territorial holdings, yet he retained the prestigious title of Prince of Wales. In 1282, conflict erupted once more following a rebellion led by Flewellyn's brother, Dafiv, in North Wales. Despite having previously aligned himself with the English and fighting against Flewellyn, Dafiv became disenchanted with what rewards he received from Edward. In the Battle of Orwin Bridge in 1282, Flewellyn was killed providing Edward with the chance to bolster his forces and seize Dolwivelan Castle, a stronghold of Welsh resistance. By June 1283, Daffif was apprehended and transported to Shrewsbury, where he faced execution, marking the final chapter of Edward's conquest of Wales. After Edward's conquest of Wales, his focus shifted to maintaining control of a region. In order to do this, he decided to build, or renovate, the Iron Ring of Castles. Primarily situated in North Wales, the area known for its staunch Welsh resistance, these ten strongholds included Aberystwyth, Beaumaris, Bill, Carnarvon, Conwy, Denby, Flint, Harlech, Harden and Rivlin. Plans for the construction of Beaumaris Castle were initially drafted shortly after Edward's conquest, in around 1284. Unlike many other castles built by Edward and his chief architect, James of St George, Beaumaris had the advantage of being constructed on a blank canvas. The chosen site, characterised by flat land and not restricted by natural obstacles, allowed for the design of an optimal fortress without constraints. Edward's ambitious plans for Wales extended beyond castle construction. He implemented a comprehensive reorganisation, dividing the region into counties and shires. Carnarvon and Harlech Castle were accompanied by the establishment of new towns, serving as administrative hubs for the shires. Beaumaris Castle in Anglesey was strategically positioned at the site of the town of Planfays, which served as a crucial trading centre linking Wales and Ireland. In a decisive move, Edward relocated the entire Welsh population from Planfays to a newly established settlement named Newborough. This relocation underscored Edward's determination to exert control over the region. Work on Beaumaris Castle did not commence until 1295, making it the last of Edward's castles built in Wales. Once construction began, it proceeded on a grand scale under the supervision of James of St George. During the initial summer, an average of 1,800 labourers, 450 stonemasons and 375 quarry workers were present on site with expenditures amounting to approximately £270 per week, a colossal sum for the time. The project quickly encountered financial difficulties due to these huge expenses. By 1300, construction had come to a complete halt. Despite initial progress, the Maris Castle was left in a partially completed state. The inner walls and towers were only a fraction of their intended height and the north and northwest sides lacked outer defences entirely. The next that we hear of Beaumaris Castle is in 1306, when reports highlighted 
the necessity for enhancing the castle's defences. Urgent recommendations were made to initiate work on completing the curtain walls and towers. Only 10 out of the proposed 16 towers had been started. Additionally, there was an urgent need for the construction of barbicans, portcullises and additional walls to bolster the castle's fortifications. With genuine concerns of a potential Scottish invasion of North Wales, the recommendations for fortifying Beaumaris Castle were swiftly embraced and put into action. The castle's constable took decisive measures, purchasing armour and substantial supplies for the garrison. Work on completing the outer defences was resumed, initially under the guidance of James of St George and later, following his passing in 1309, overseen by Master Nicholas de Durnford. By 1330, construction at Beaumaris Castle once again ground to a halt. Despite a substantial investment of funds, the castle remained incomplete. Nevertheless, notable progress had been made. The gap in the outer circuit had been closed, additional towers in the outer ward had been constructed, and work on the moat had been undertaken. A survey conducted in 1343 estimated that a vast sum of £643 would be required to bring Beaumaris Castle anywhere close to its originally proposed completed state. Despite its incomplete state, Beaumaris Castle remained a formidable fortress. It was meticulously designed according to a symmetrical, concentric plan, featuring both an inner and outer ward, each fortified with protective towers and encircled by a moat. The castle boasted a very strategic tidal dock, which meant that ships could come in all the way from the sea and drop off supplies, which would be pretty handy in the time of a siege. It was defended by a defensive wall that was later dubbed the Gunner's Walk and a firing platform up there, which could potentially hold a siege engine such as a trebuchet. The outer curtain walls featured 12 towers, enclosing an area approximately 60 feet across. These walls boasted two gateways, the North Gate, known as Planfay's Gate, and the main gate situated beside the dock, referred to as the Gate Next to the Sea, which was reached by a drawbridge. Originally, the outer curtain walls and towers had 164 arrow slits. However, the inner curtain walls had an advantage because they were even higher, which meant the battlements could be used to fire down upon attackers. One of the innovative features of Vomaris Castle is the misalignment of the gates. So, if an attacker made it over the drawbridge, through the first gate, past the portcullises and murder holes, they come into the big open space, being fired down upon. Instead of going straight over to the next gate, no, they have to turn right their next face with the Barbican. In the unlikely event that they actually manage to make it this far to the inner gate, they are faced with more portcullises and murder holes. The inner ward's wall boasted an additional six towers, originally designed to be three storeys high and two grand gatehouses. These walls were formidable, measuring 15 and a half feet thick and standing at a height of 36 feet. Often they widened at the base, a technique known as battering, to further deter undermining and scaling attempts. Within the inner ward, the castle was structured to accommodate various domestic and administrative functions. Ranges of buildings lined the west and east sides of the ward, intended to house living quarters and other facilities. Some remnants of these structures, including the remains of fireplaces, can still be observed in the stonework today. In 1400, a rebellion erupted in North Wales against English authority. Led by a Wangelandauer, Beaumaris Castle found itself besieged and subsequently captured by the rebels in 1403. 
only to be reclaimed by royal forces in 1405. Another clever feature at Bomaris Castle and also feature at Carnarvon Castle, slight hint where we might be going soon, is in the inner ward, walls of these clever little passages. They once had a complete circuit, complete loop of the castle and you could get from one tower to another tower without being seen. Integrated as well, it had little latrines and little sort of guard rooms, sleeping rooms. If you want to just take a look, we've got one I think just in there. By 1534, during Roland de Verville's tenure as castle constable, the castle had fallen into a state of disrepair. Rainwater seeped into most of the rooms, leading to chronic dampness throughout the castle. Historical records noted that there was scarcely a single chamber in Bone Maris Castle where a man could lie dry. In 1539, a report highlighted concerns about the insufficient protection afforded to Beaumaris Castle. The fortress was equipped with a meagre arsenal comprising only 8 or 10 small guns and 40 bows. The newly appointed constable, Richard Bulkley, deemed these defences wholly inadequate for safeguarding the castle against the threat of a potential Scottish attack. Unfortunately, over the years, the situation continued to deteriorate. By 1609, the castle was described as being utterly decayed. During the English Civil War, which erupted in 1642 between the Royalist supporters of Charles I and the Parliamentarians, Beaumaris Castle assumed strategic significance as it controlled part of the route between the King's bases in Ireland and his operations in England. Thomas Bulkley, whose family had long been involved in managing the castle, held by Maris for the King and invested approximately £3,000 in enhancing its defences. Despite these fortified improvements, Beaumaris Castle eventually succumbed to parliamentarian forces under the command of General Thomas Mitton in 1646. A subsequent revolt against the parliamentarians arose in 1648, albeit briefly, resulting in a fine of £7,000 imposed on Anglesey. Following the Civil War, a significant number of British castles were deliberately destroyed to prevent their military use. However, Beaumaris Castle was spared from this fate, likely due to Parliament's concerns about the potential threat of a royalist invasion from Scotland. Upon Charles II's restoration to the throne in 1660, the Bulkley family were reinstated as castle constables. However, rather than restoration, Beaumaris Castle suffered from neglect during this period. It was stripped of valuable lead and other remaining resources, including its roofs. In 1832, Beaumaris Castle gained notable attention when Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Kent, accompanied by her 13-year-old daughter, the future Queen Victoria, paid a visit to the castle. In 1925, the castle underwent a significant transformation when it was placed under the care of the Commissioners of Works and a comprehensive restoration programme was initiated. Beaumaris Castle, along with Carnarvon, Harlech and Conwy, formed the UNESCO-designated Castles and Town Walls of King Edward and Gwyneth World Heritage Site, being the finest examples of late 13th and early 14th century military architecture in Europe. 
where Maris Castle is open to the public for an entrance fee and is managed by CADU, the Welsh Government's Historic Environment Service. But Maris Castle may never have been completed, but it is still worth a visit. There's a lot here to see and it is still a pretty formidable fortress. Imagine what this place might have looked like if it had been built to its full height. I hope you have enjoyed our video today. Stay tuned if you want to hear about a couple of ghosts that apparently reside at Beaumaris Castle. If not, then it's time for me just to say thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe if you have not already. And I hope to see you on our next adventure very soon. Bye for now. Stories of paranormal activity at Beaumaris Castle have circulated for years, with many attributing the phenomena the souls of soldiers and workers who once inhabited or toiled within its walls. The chapel within the castle is reputed to be a hot spot for supernatural encounters, with visitors reporting faint sounds of chanting and experiencing sudden drops in temperature. Numerous recordings of this chanting have been captured by visitors, adding to the mystique of the castle's haunted reputation. Explorers of Beaumaris Castle have described eerie experiences of feeling followed by heavy footsteps, only to find no one behind them when they turn around. Some have even glimpsed shadowy figures darting around corners or disappearing into thin air. These tales of ghostly encounters add an intriguing layer to the rich history and atmospheric allure of Beaumaris Castle.